I shouldn't be charged with anything. Because I didn't do anything wrong. Netflix's three-part upcoming true crime documentary series, I Just Killed My Dad, takes a look at the 2019 passing of Birch Template at the hands of his son, Anthony Template. But as you guys know, situations like this are usually not as simple as they may initially seem. I'm Adam Andrews with Where Are They Now? And today, so you're prepped for the upcoming docu-series, we're talking about Anthony Template. Anthony Template is a now 20-year-old from Louisiana who, back in June 2019, shot his father, Bert Template, two times with a third shot missing after the two got into an argument in the early hours of the morning at their Baton Rouge home. Initially to prosecutors, this was a simple open and shut case. But what was the argument? Well, according to Anthony himself, the two got into it over Anthony's cell phone. It turns out Bert had been trying to look through the phone to see if Anthony had been speaking to Bert's ex-wife, Susan Template. A strange thing to check your son's phone for, but this is just the tip of the iceberg that is Anthony Template's motivation. It came to light during the time following his arrest and the subsequent trial that Bert was an incredibly horrible person. The rest of Anthony's family told the press that Bert Template had taken Anthony away from their home in Texas when Anthony was just five, kidnapping him and had been keeping him secluded from the rest of the family and for the most part, the world for years ever since. Bert even successfully persuaded his own son that his real mother didn't want or care for him since she had her own problems, and it made certain that Anthony would never seek her out. Anthony even told the judge that he has never completed a year of school thanks to his father, who never allowed him to attend. Instead, Anthony learned to read, write, and a few basic things from his stepmother, Susan, starting at 10, but it didn't go much beyond that in terms of an education. Anthony's father was obviously incredibly controlled not allowing Anthony to have friends and tracking him using video cameras and a GPS. Bert's ex-wife Susan even filed an order of protection against Bert several months before the shooting actually took place, according to court documents. Those documents also stated that Bert was physical with Susan and in one instance even knocked some of her teeth out. It was this mental and physical mistreatment, obviously also suffered by Anthony himself, on top of the control he was under that finally pushed the boy to the edge. And it's the main cause of controversy surrounding the case. Was it intentional or was it self-defense? Well, on June 3rd, 2019, after the argument over Anthony's cell phone and his intoxicated father chasing him through the house, Anthony went into his father's bedroom where Bert kept his two weapons and locked the door. The door was being constantly banged on by Bert who was trying to chase his son. And when Anthony finally came out, he came out firing. According to police, his father stumbled back to the bathroom and asked his son not to fire again, which he did. Anthony described what happened in an immediate 911 call after the shooting took place, saying, quote, he tried to attack me, then we got into a fist fight, then I ran in his room, closed the door. He continued, as I unlocked the door, he tried inaudible, and then I shot him. Despite his 911 call, officers had a hard time believing Anthony as he initially came off as insensitive and unapologetic, and he had even chased his father into the toilet. This led police to believe he had committed his crimes in a cold-blooded way, but it didn't take long for the severity and deep-rooted nature of Anthony and his father's relationship to come to light thanks to his biological mother and the rest of his family finally being able to find Anthony after his arrest. Anthony's sister, after finally being reunited with her brother, had this to say to WAFB back in 2019. After 11 years of waiting to hear if my brother was still alive, he is found. My brave brother had to defend himself for the last time against that evil man. He snatched him from our home. Bert and my mom were together for about 10 years and it was extremely violent. When Bert initially succumbed to his injuries, the teen's attempted manslaughter charge was amended to just manslaughter. But initially, the grand jury later indicted him for second degree murder. Now thanks to the truth of his past coming forward, he was eventually given assistance and access to psychiatrists, all of whom claimed that Anthony was no threat to society whatsoever. Thanks to this assistance, his family and the psychiatrists, on December 19th, 2019, he was permitted to be freed on a smaller $50,000 bail with a few conditions, including including a strict curfew and wearing a GPS device at all times. But as more and more of the dark past Anthony had suffered at the hands of his father came to light, the district attorney's office and Anthony's defense attorney agreed to offer him a negligent homicide plea, and he took that. 
In early March 2021, he entered a plea of no contest for which he was given five years of probation with credit for time already served as well as orders to also complete high school, attend counseling and either take up employment or enroll in a full time education during his supervised probation. Templates attorney Jared Ambo was pleased with the outcome of the case saying quote, this feels like the first day of his life. And even prosecutors agreed that the court's ruling was the best case scenario, with District Attorney Hiller Moore III stating quote, We think that this was the most appropriate, fair outcome for all parties. Prosecutor Dana Cummings said during the trial and judgment, What would time in jail do for this young man who has never actually had a chance to learn or to have friends or to be in the world? These days, it's not incredibly clear what Anthony is up to. He prefers to try and stay out of the spotlight and is actively trying to live a normal life. And we here all hope he can actually achieve that. According to all sources, he is still living in Louisiana and is just trying to build a new world for himself without his father or anyone else controlling what he does, where he goes, and what he believes, and who he talks to. Hopefully, with the guidance supplied to him and his biological family finally able to contact him, he can do just that. Anthony says during the upcoming documentary, quote, Feeling in charge of your life is incredibly crucial. You get your freedom stripped away from you in jail, and it just kind of made me realize that I just want to be normal. I just want to live normally and be happy and just move on. Anthony, who is now 20 years old, will appear in Netflix's upcoming documentary, I Just Killed My Dad, in which he'll speak about his father's passing. The three-part documentary series will cover everything from the beginning to the present and will hopefully cover any extraneous details I happen to miss. But for now, that is all the details I could gather on the story of Anthony Template through my internet sleuthing. If I miss any crucial information, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Are you going to be watching the three-part docuseries? Let me know that as well down below. Be sure to like and subscribe here at Where Are They Now. I've been your host, Adam Andrews. You can find me on Instagram in the description below. But for now, stay safe and well-informed out there. And thanks for watching.